Yo guys, Almighty Zentaco here. I just wanted to apologize in advance because there is a lot of background noise in this video and that's because I live in a madhouse and on this day there were like 50 kids here. So I do a ton of editing to make this even remotely understandable. So please bear with me. All right guys, that's, uh, that's my little announcement. Enjoy the video. Hello there everyone, I am the Almighty Zentaco and today we're gonna be learning how to make platformer enemy movements. Now I know I've done this before, but this one is different. In this one, they're gonna have gravity and the ability to jump, um, and they don't use detectors of any sort. They are fully self-contained. And we might go ahead and add some more behavior to them as well. Uh, but right now, we're just gonna make sure that they can just walk back and forth, and whenever they hit an obstacle, they're gonna turn around. They also can jump and change speeds. So this is what that's going to look like. So they move around, and if I press spacebar, one of them will be randomly selected and they will jump and as you see they do uh, collide and they don't get stuck in the ground or anything we can also press one and it'll alter their speeds if they stop moving entirely it changes the animation to a stopped animation so all these guys are they are active objects they have three alterable values an ID value an X speed value and a Y speed value we're gonna start off by giving them an initial X speed value of two um, these here are just backdrops they are set as obstacles so make sure you set your backdrops as obstacles or they won't work everything else in the frame is simply an uncolliding a backdrop that you cannot collide with okay so we're gonna go ahead and insert a comment and I'm gonna call this init for initialize so we're gonna need to do a start of frame event so go ahead and do that now and for the start of frame all we're gonna do is go to our enemy oh I need to uh, inform you of one more thing. If we click on our enemy, we can see that they have a qualifier. So we're gonna use the qualifier zero to do all of our code with. That way we can make multiple enemies uh, of completely different types, give them the qualifier zero, and they will move around and do everything we want them to do. So go ahead and give these dudes qualifier zero. You can also add other qualifiers if you have more complex behaviors you want to have for some enemies to have and not others. So you could have like qualifier one, two, three, and four, etc. And each one could be a different thing that only that enemy type would do. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is start a start of frame event. We're gonna go to the group zero, which is our enemy, and we're gonna spread a value. Let's go to spread value, and that's ID. We're gonna spread zero and ID, giving a value from zero to whatever for each of our guys. All right, we're going to copy and paste this and write another comment. This one is going to be X move. So we're going to use a loop uh, for each loop to do this to get the behavior we want. So we're going to do that with an always event. So we are always going to call a for each loop for the enemy group, which is group zero. So go down to count and it's for each object. So here we have to name that loop and I'm just going to call it X move. And so this will run this loop once for each one of these objects. That way it allow us to scope. Okay, so now we are running a loop for each one of those objects. So we're gonna wanna do something on that loop. So we're gonna go to the group zero, go to loops on each object. So now we need to call or reference the loop that we called, which was X move. So type in X move. And what we're gonna wanna do on this loop is move these enemies by the increment set up in the X speed. So go to position, set X coordinate, grab their X coordinate, and we're gonna add their value of X speed. So this is just gonna move them left or right depending on their X speed. Obviously positive will be right, negative will be left. Now we wanna control collisions. What happens if they run into a wall? We want them to turn around. So we will do this again. We will drag this down. So it's gonna be again on the loop X move. That way we make sure that the, uh, the, the object, each one of these objects will be tested individually. So there's gonna be no mix ups. And then we want to also find out if group zero is colliding with a backdrop or rather overlapping a backdrop. So if this is true, then what we're going to want to do is pull, uh, start a loop to pull them out of the wall because they've gone into the wall. So we, uh, we need to store a temporary value somewhere. I'm going to do it in a global value, which I've already set up called current underscore ID, which stands for just our cur underscore ID, which stands for current ID. So what we're gonna do is whenever one of these objects collides with a backdrop, we want to plug in his ID value into the global value of current ID. So we're gonna go ahead and change a global value and set current ID to 
the value of retrieve, or rather ID. So grab retrieve ID. And again, that is for group zero, not uh, not this enemy here. In fact, we can hide this because we're never gonna do anything with that. Okay, so first thing we've done is plugged in the ID. Then we need to run a loop. So go to fast loops, start loop, and we're gonna call it X collide. And we're gonna run this a large number of times, like 32. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull him out of the wall as long as this loop is running and he's in the wall. As soon as he's no longer in the wall, we're going to stop that loop. And then we're also going to flip his direction around. Okay, so now we need to do something on that loop. So go to on loop, and the loop was x collide. And we wanna find out if uh, the alter value of this object's ID is equal to the global value of ID. What we're doing there is scoping the appropriate object. Uh, otherwise, this loop would just run on all the objects and move them. We want to make sure that we're only moving the object that is in the wall. And we uh, plugged the ID of the one that hit the wall into the global value. So we are going to check the ID of that object against that global value. So we want to find out if this is the right object and then also if it is colliding with the wall or rather overlapping the wall. So overlapping a backdrop. So it's on loop x collide ID of the enemy group zero equals current ID and the group zero is overlapping a backdrop. If that is happening, we want to move him out of the wall. And we're gonna do that this way. We're gonna set the X coordinate to his current X coordinate minus, and uh, we're gonna do, essentially this is something called sign. We're gonna, we're gonna get the direction of his movement. So we're gonna do this by saying parentheses, then we're gonna grab the value of his X speed. We're gonna divide that by ABS, which stands for absolute value, put another parentheses, and again, grab the value of X speed, and close it with two parentheses there. So what this is gonna do is pull him out of the wall in the opposite, he's gonna move in the opposite direction of whichever way he was going, by one pixel per, per movement, or per uh, loop. We're gonna go ahead and just copy this and paste it. Okay, so on line eight, uh, we wanna do something if the object is no longer in the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and just negate where it says is overlapping a backdrop. So we're gonna find out if he's not overlapping the backdrop. When that happens, we need to flip his X speed. So go to alterable values and set X speed to the value of X speed and multiply that times a negative one, making it negative if it's positive and positive if it's negative. Then we're gonna to need to stop the loop. So go to fast loops, stop loop, and that was called X collide. Otherwise it would run that loop 32 times and it would move him 32 pixels away uh, and that's not what we want to do. All right, let's run it and see if it works. And it is working. The reason they are bouncing away from the wall without touching it is because I believe I've set them to be colliding, uh, yeah, they're colliding with the boundary box, not with the actual pixel art. We can do it either way. Uh, the way you control that is by going into use find detection. Use find detection will collide with the actual art. If you do not use find detection, it collides with the actual size of the sprite, including the alpha channel. So that's pretty much the basics of the movement. Um, now, if we look at these sprites here, we will see that they do have two directions. They have a walking animation which is looped, and they also have a jumping animation, which is essentially just one of the frames of the walking animation. We're gonna go ahead and control the direction that he's facing based on his X speed. And this one we don't need to do on a for each loop, we can just check it. So we're gonna to go to the object here. We're gonna find out if the alterable value of X speed is greater than zero. And if it is, that means he's moving to the right. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this with Control C, Control V and edit it. And on this one, we want to find out if he's going the other way, which would be lower than zero. So if he's if he's moving to the right, we obviously want to change his direction to the right. So go to direction, select direction, and make sure you've selected the right direction there. We're gonna drag this down and edit it and simply switch to the left on line 10 where we're moving left. All right, now we're gonna do the Y move. So the Y move functions pretty much exactly the same, just uh, we're gonna have to also always add gravity. So we're gonna set up an always event just like we did before, and we are going to always start a for each loop, which is under count. And we're gonna call this Y move. 
And all we're going to do then is go to loops on each object. And again, that was Y move. So what we're going to do is set his position, its Y coordinate, to his current Y coordinate. And we're going to add the value of Y speed. Now, because this is uh, upward and downward movement, uh, and obviously there's going to be gravity, so we need to facilitate gravity. And we do that by setting the alterable value of y speed to itself. Plus 0 0.1. That's going to bring us down always. In fact, if we look at it here, it'll kind of spaz out, but we can see that it will move if we check it now. Yeah, <laughs> kind of spazzed out there, but it does work. Okay, so now we want to check for collisions, so let's go ahead and do that now. Again, we're going to want to do that on the loop, and we're going to find out if he is colliding, or rather overlapping a backdrop. Now, the reason we can we can do this this way, and these these uh, X move and Y move will not interfere with each other, is because we've completely dealt with the uh, X move collisions already and we've pulled them out of the wall so by the time we get down here there will be no collision happening unless it's because we've moved him into a wall on the Y axis so we know that these collisions will only be up and down and these collisions here will only be left and right because we're taking care of these separately okay so we're gonna do the exact same thing pretty much uh, so when he's overlapping the backdrop then we're going to set the global value of ID to his ID value and we're going to start a loop. Y collide. And we're going to run that loop 32 times. Uh, I ran it 32.0. That's that was a slip of my finger. I don't think that would matter, but I I've, I've never tried to run a loop as a decimal, so I don't know what would happen. Anyway, so um, now we got to do something on that loop. So on loop Y collide. And then we want to uh, we want to check against the IDs again. So go ahead and find out if the ID of this object equals the current ID global value. And if it does, then that is the one that made the collision. So we have scoped the right one. And we want to find out if he's overlapping a backdrop. So if this is true, we need to pull him out of the wall. And we'll do that the same way as we did before using that uh, complicated function with absolute value. It's really not that bad if you actually parse out the math, but it, I know it looks a little daunting. All right, so we're going to set his position, his y-coordinate position, to his current y-coordinate position. And we're going to subtract the value of, put a parentheses, its y-speed divided by the absolute value of y speed. Just put it in here exactly as I do. And the reason we're doing it this way is because we only need one line to deal with collisions in all directions. Okay, we're gonna copy line 15 and paste it, and then we're gonna change one thing on the conditions, and that is we're gonna negate this here where it says overlapping a backdrop. So this is what we're gonna do whenever the, um, whenever the object has been fully pulled out of the backdrop. And what we're going to do is set the alterable value of y speed to 0, and we're going to end that loop. Stop loop, and that was y collide. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste, and we're going to call this just inputs. And these are going to be where we have the input code for which makes our enemies do interesting things. We're going to set it up just to test. Uh, with a key press. So that's upon pressing a key, I'm going to use space. And then we're going to go ahead and set that Y speed value to a negative so that they jump. So set the alterable value of Y speed to something like negative 5. So when we press space, they should all jump. And as you see, they can't go through the wall. They will not jump through it. So in terms of collision, we are done. All we need to do now is set up animations based on our various states. So let's go ahead and copy and paste here. Call this animations. Now there might be a better way to do this than the way I'm doing it, but this is the way I'm doing it because it's fairly simple. So we're gonna do it this way. So first we need to set up 
uh, the walking animation. And we're going to do that by finding out if the alterable value of x speed is different than zero, meaning it's positive or negative, because zero would be stopped, and also that he's not falling. So find out if the alterable value of y speed equals zero. So if that happens, we know he's not falling and he's moving either left or right. When that happens, we're gonna change his animation to walking. Let's go ahead and drag this down here. Boom, and edit it. So in this line, we wanna find out if his x speed equals zero and y speed equals zero, meaning he is he is not moving left to right, he's not moving up and down. If that's happening, he is idle, so drag this down and edit it. And we'll put that as the stopped animation. All right, so I'm gonna use the jump animation for both falling and jumping. So we're gonna find out if the y speed is greater um, than one. Because we don't, I'm gonna give it some leeway room so that uh, it doesn't conflict with the idle animation. So one is a relatively slow fall anyway. So you know, it gives you just a just a smidge of time between the idle animation, the walking animation, and the falling animation. So we're gonna change that animation value to jumping. We're gonna copy line 22 and paste it, and we're just going to edit it so that we're checking if it's also lower than a negative one which would be if we're jumping. So line 22 is for falling, line 23 is for jumping. Let's see what happens. Okay, as you see, it's a little funky. And the reason it's being funky is because we have Y move after X move. So we're gonna grab all this and just drag it up right above X move to make sure Y move is first. And that should sort that out. Problem solved. Let's see what happens if, uh, here, let's go ahead and move this input down here. I accidentally copied it, let me delete that. Um, and we will have it set to something like the keyboard upon pressing one. Okay, upon pressing one, we are just going to set the X speed to zero. So if we can test to see if the idle animation works and it should, let's find out. Boom, and they're not moving. So that concludes our enemy movement video, including gravity and jumping and animations. I hope you guys uh, found this one useful and educational. I apologize, like I said before, this one required a lot of editing and I would have liked to have done it again because it was a little shoddy, but uh, time prevented that. So been real busy working on my own projects. So it's been difficult for me to pump out these tutorials, but I do plan on doing at least one a week, uh, hopefully. Uh, as well as some more gameplay videos. I do find those enjoyable. So, as always, guys, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And uh, join my Discord channel if you need help with your games. Lots of people there who want to help you out, including me. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.